Okay, Chair Blatz, looks like we're ready. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and call the meeting to order. And if you would, please do the roll call. Board Member Edmonds? I am here. Board Member Huber? Here. Board Member LaVere? Here. Board Member Long? Here. Board Member Parks? Here. Board Member Pollock? Present. Board Member Ramirez? Here. Board Member Rollins? Board Member Zaragoza? Here. Chair Blatz? Here. All right, now if everyone would stand and for the Pledge of Allegiance, repeat after me, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Fair warning. All right. Um, the, all right, well, minutes from the meeting of the Air Pollution Control Board meeting held Tuesday, no April 13th, 2021. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? So move, Pollock. Second, Edmonds. Okay, Pollock and Edmonds. Thank you. I'm sorry, I was adjusting my screen. Board Member Edmonds? Yes. Board Member Huber? Yes. Board Member Lavere? Yes. Board Member Long? Board Member Long? Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Board Member Blatz? Yes. All right, moving on to number five is the agenda review. Um, do I, I have, have a motion on? Sorry. Um, I apologize, I missed my vote. This is Supervisor Long. I said yes, apologize. Thank you, Supervisor Long. Um, number five, agenda review. So do I have a motion on the agenda for today? Do it for Whatever. Okay. Rollins? Second. You need a second? I believe it was Rollins, and I think I heard uh, Mr. Zaragoza. Yes, Zaragoza second. Thank you. <coughs> Who was the mover? Rollins. What? Okay, give me one moment, please. You're a little child. Sweet. Okay, we have Rollins back. So I just added him to our roll, our roll call. Mia, can you see Zaragoza? <laughs> I see you, Mayor. I do see you. I, okay, good. <laughs> okay, so it was moved by Rollins and it was seconded by who? Mayor Zaragoza. Zaragoza. Zaragoza, thank you. Board member Edmonds? Yes. Board member Huber? Yes. Board member LaVere? Yes. Board member Long? Board member Long? Yes. Board member Parks? Yes. Board member Pollock? Yes. Board member Ramirez? Yes. Board member Rollins? Yes. Board member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right, 
Moving on to item number six, public comment. Do we have any public comment today? I'm going to check our email box and it doesn't look like we have any public comment for the meeting today. Okay, looking like we don't have any public comment, then we'll go ahead and close the public comment period and move on to board comments. Are there any comments by any of the board members, questions, updates, or anything else they'd like to share? Oh, looks like Supervisor Ramirez, yes. Just very quickly, I uh, we're not in the South, uh, South Coast Air Quality Management District, but I wanted to publicly congratulate the majority who supported the indirect source rule, which would go to controlling um, uh, all of the diesel particulate matter that's going in the air, particularly Inland Empire. And I would recommend to anybody to listen to the proceedings of last Friday. It was really interesting and enlightening about what um, diesel emissions are doing to the health of people, particularly children in that region. So it was a terrific uh, vote. Thank you. Mr. Chair, is there a ghost? Chair Blatt, you're muted. Sorry, I jumped on there. Sorry, Mary Zaragoza, please. Yes, I just want to wish a belated Mother's Day for all the, the young ladies that we have on the board. There you go. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers, future mothers, and mothers of everyone. Everybody has a mom at some point, so happy Mother's Day to everyone as well. Are there any other board comments? All right. Not seeing any, I think we will move on to the air pollution control officer comments. Doctor, please go ahead. Four or five items. Um, uh, so this truly uh, last Friday was invited by the uh, Chalice Community Forum to present on air quality matters uh, that I did. Um, and also there was quite a bit of interest about the South Coast rules that uh, the supervisor was talking, Supervisor Ramirez was talking about. So there is a lot of interest to see that we, our board and that's something similar. Um, so certainly, you know, those comments were made and I suspect that we are gonna be hearing uh, similar comments uh, 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 later on moving forward in the future as we proceed through our air quality management plan development at, uh, at work. Uh, the second item that I want to alert the board about is, uh, uh, you may recall two, three years ago, uh, under the prior administration, California's waiver authority or its ability to set um, tailpipe standards for, for model sources was unceremoniously removed. Um, uh, EPA under the current administration is uh, reconsidering that action and they're interested in reversing it. Uh, and I believe the proposal will be published in the Federal Register uh, tomorrow. And that initiates the formal proceedings. So more on this uh, uh, to become um, uh, in the near future. It's certainly an extremely important item for us as a non-attainment area and for our state with uh, plenty of non-attainment districts. Um, it's of um, uh, vital importance that California retain that authority, that ability to regulate model sources. And with that, uh, uh, that concludes my comments. All right, thank you, Dr. Kostopoulos. With that, we'll move on to the regular agenda, item number nine, approvals of the appointments of Jennifer Hernandez to the Air Pollution Control District Advisory Committee as the representative for the city of Fillmore for a term ending May 10th, 2025. Uh, Dr. Kostopoulos, did you wanna brief us on this quickly? Uh, this is a very important commission and I'm glad the city of Fillmore um, uh, has an excellent representative. We hope I would uh, support Ms. Fernandez's uh, appointment, but I believe board member, um, Edmonds uh, may have some comments to make. Ms. Edmonds, please feel free to let us know, seeing this is from your area, your neck of the woods. 
Yes, and I have worked with Jennifer Hernandez for several years and find her not only highly qualified, but also very intelligent, hardworking. So I would like to move the uh, approval of the appointment. All right, do we have a second? Second. All right, Edmonds and Rollins. Without any other discussion, I think we can go ahead and move toward a vote. Give me one second. Little technical difficulty here. No problem, you take your time. Thank you. Okay. And it was Edmonds and Rollins, if you didn't get that. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay. Yep. Edmonds and Rollins. Board member Edmonds? Yes. Board member Huber? Yes. Board member Lever? Yes. Board member Long? Yes. Board member Parks? Yes. Board member Pollock? Yes. Board member Ramirez? Yes. Board member Rollins? Yes. Board member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right. Oh. Unanimous fail, fail. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, that we need not to correct. There may be one day we're done with Zoom, but not yet. The computer had a howl moment there. <laughs> Okay, here we go. All right, I'll go ahead and introduce the next. Oh, there we go. All right, uh, we're moving on to item number 10 approval of the 2020 annual report of the air toxics hotspots program. So, Dr. Tosopoulos, you want to brief us quickly on this? Sure, as Mia brings up the slides on this particular item, I'll make uh, just a couple of comments. Uh, uh, the Air Toxic Hotspots Program is one of our cornerstone programs through which we are uh, reducing toxic exposure to our residents. This is our annual report, and Mr. Ali Gassemi was uh, going to do the honors with the, just a few slides that we have on the program. Yes. Chair Blatz, member of the board, good afternoon. Ali Gassemi, engineering manager, engineering planning, room development manager. Uh, just uh, to provide you with the background, it, it, can I have the next slide, please? Yeah. Okay. AB 2588 Hotspot Program is a state law. It's a public right to know program. And it was adopted in 1987. The primary purpose of this program is to identify the facilities with toxic emissions and estimate the health impact to the surrounding com community. So that's the purpose of the program. But it includes, there are several steps that we are taking to get there. These steps are quantifying. Sorry, I think she would have to move the slides. Yeah, next one, please. Oh, thank you. There are several steps that is involved with the process. The first one is we are providing guidelines and procedures and facilities are reporting their toxic emission to us. So the, prefer, the purpose is to quantify the amount of toxics and these are about like 500, more than 500 
toxic compounds that they, we are doing, we are collecting inventory for. The next step is to do some kind of an assessment and estimate the health impact of these to the surrounding communities. And these can be done with two different procedures. One of them is a procedure guideline that we call, we call it prioritization guideline or prioritization procedure. And the other one conducting a health risk assessment. Then what the, the third process would be public notification. We notify the surrounding communities of the health impact for the facilities that they creating a significant health impact to the community. And the last, we conduct risk reduction. This is if the facility is, is becoming, a, they have a significant impact to the surrounding community, they have few years to reduce their emission to the acceptable level, basically. Now the next slide, please. Yeah. This is a flow chart that what I said, we're gonna go through the flow chart and take you through it. It's, it provides better understanding of what the process is. The, First, as I stated, we collect the emission inventory. We, the facilities reporting their emissions, we are providing emission factors and guidelines, and we develop toxics inventory for the facilities in mature account. Then we, we have a system, it's an analysis that we do, we call it prioritization. That prioritization procedure is creating some kind of a number that is the scaling numbers that we say, Based on those numbers, we are categorizing these facilities to different levels. If the facilities prioritization score, which is a number, is between one and actually less than one, we say these, these facilities is going to go to the low priority. If the score is between one and 10, then we say these facilities are intermediate facilities. And if the facilities prioritization score is greater than or equal 10, they are high priority. Now, for the high priority facilities, we have a procedure, there is the next step. This is a course estimate, it's just very rough estimate. So we ask the facility to conduct and perform health risk assessment, which is more refined assessment of how much is the impact, health impact to the surrounding communities. After the facility conduct this health risk assessment, based on the health risk assessment, result, we're going to go through the same process again. We put the facility on the low priority, intermediate, and high priority. For the low priority facility, they don't have to do anything. They are exempt from any requirement because this is very low, like they don't even have a significant impact. For the intermediate facilities, they, we require them uh, every four years to update their information because we want to find out if there has been any changes for those facilities. And then for the high priority facilities, there is a different process. They are, we are going to the public notification process. We notify all of the communities of their impact, that the risk impact that has been exposed to. And at the same time, we make a, we ask the facility to come up with a plan and we provide some limited years that they have to reduce their risk to the acceptable level. Next slide, please. These are, what are the responsibility of the district? What are we required to do? We, we are provide, actually, we have to evaluate the facility inventory and also health risk assessment. And also based on the priority score, we require the facility to do certain actions. Then when the health risk assessment, we, we actually have the health risk assessment available for anybody who wants to look at it. And then we, also, at the same time, we have to, we are required to publish annual report as we do today for your approval. Now, what has been the outcome of last year, our evaluation of the like, program? We still, like last year, we don't have any high priority facilities. That's a good sign. And also, intermediate facilities, we have 20 facilities that based on the conducting a health risk assessment, they fall between the category that they are in intermediate. And then based on the prioritization score, we have another 20. So the total is 40 facilities that they are in the intermediate category. And we have the low priority facility, which is about 19 facilities. And then we also have industry-wide facilities. These are all of the small, uh, like 
facilities such as gas stations and auto body shop that haven't changed. These are, we always have about 303 facilities that they are under these categories. Uh, Those numbers are in the next slide. Next slide, please. Yeah, these are the numbers that I was just referring to. Next one. No, that's it. That, now I concluded my presentation. If you have any question, I'm ready to, I'm ready to answer any question you may have. Mr. Chair, it's Zaragoza. Zaragoza, go ahead. The question I have is, uh, how do we notify the, uh, the communities and the, the hotspots and emissions you know, if, if they were potentially up in the high or, or intermediate? How do we notify them? We don't notify the facilities if the facility, no, we don't notify the communities if we have facilities in the intermediate categories. We oh. don't notify them if they are above or they are high priority, which we do not have any. But if we do, they, there is a iso, we call it isoplat. Like there is a range that the health risk assessment is saying that, for example, up to this range, these residents for workers and sensitive receptors are exposed to a risk more than, let's say, 10 in a million. It's being notified based on the graph that the program is going to create for us. So they, receive letter. they receive a letter from us. Yes, they receive a letter. They we have a public workshop. They have public no, actually notices. We have everything. It's a lengthy process. Okay, thank you. Miss Ed, yes. Yes, I thought I heard you say that the facilities themselves evaluate their own status, and if that is true. How do you verify that what they evaluate is accurate? You said that the facilities self evaluate themselves. And oh, when we provide the facilities with the guidelines, the facilities they are supposed to estimate their toxic emission. But those estimate sometimes there are some emission factors that they are using, sometimes there are source tests that they have conducted at the facility that we are not aware of. So they are providing those information using those source tests and default emission factor, and we evaluate those, and then we categorize the facilities. Thank you. Mr. Ross? Yes, um, I had a question as to what category uh, two facilities near the city of Port Wainimi might be considered. Uh, the first one would be the uh, paper plant on Wainimi Road to the east of um, Port Wainimi, and then to the uh, the port itself to the west. Um, are they, what category are they considered? These are uh, New Indy. New Indy. Okay, this facility is considered to be in intermediate category. And the reason for that is the facility conducted the health risk assessment. This is a refined emissions and category. So I, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you. So is that the uh, the uh, the paper plant, or is that the port, or is that both? No, I was referring to the paper plant, the, the new Indy. Yes, yes, yes. That's the one you were referring to. This one yes. is what I was referring to you, like telling you that they did a health risk assessment and they fall within the category of intermediate. The total risk from that facility was 0.1 in a million. It, it's on the page of appendix B. Okay, if you look at your annual, the annual report, which is in the attachment, yes. on page appendix B, there is a table. It has a list of all of the intermediate facilities. Okay, thank you. No problem. And the whole of Wainimi, they only have a few emergency. These are easy, like one or two. So yeah, we, we still have to uh, evaluate them, but currently yeah. it's not in the program. Yeah, you can tell. Did you hear? Uh, just a little bit. He said that he only had. They they have a couple of emergency IC engines that they are actually they are they have permitted with us. It is under evaluation, basically. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Are there any other questions or comments from any of the board members? Not hearing any, then I will entertain a motion for approving the air toxic hotspot. I so approve. I move 
Mrs. Edmonds. All right, Ms. Edmonds with us. Second, Ms. Pollock. Edmonds and Pollock. I have Edmonds as a mover and Pollock as a seconder. Correct, ma'am. Okay, I'm not sure why my um, mover and seconder are not appearing. I'm going to clear it and try again. Okay, I have Edmonds as a mover and Pollock as a seconder. Correct. Board member Edmonds? Yes. Board member Huber? Yes. Board member LaVere? Yes. Board member Long? Yes. Board member Parks? Yes. Board member Pollock? Yes. Board member Ramirez? Yes. Board member Rollins? Yes. Board member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right. Moving on to item number 11. Receive and file the comprehensive audit for fiscal year ended June 30th, 2020. Dr. Tosopoulos, if you will. Board, we received the two uh, audit reports. Uh, one is a comprehensive general audit. And the other one is a single audit report that is required of us to complete to allow us to, or to, allow us to receive the uh, EPA grants. And I'm uh, very pleased to report that um, we have passed both audits with flying colors. No significant uh, funding has um, uh, been reported. And obviously, as the executive officer of the agency, that, that makes me very happy. So this is a receipt file item. Um, both documents were uh, sent under a separate cover to each one of you for your reading pleasure. Thank you. Are there any questions from the board? Not seeing any, then I will entertain a motion to approve if anyone has one. I'll move that chair Blatz and congrats to Lockie and the staff on, on these good findings. It's always nice when these come back without any uh, significant uh, uh, findings, right? These are the kind you want to have be simple. So uh, we have a second. motion by uh, Supervisor LeVere. Do we have a second? Zaragoza. All right. Mayor Zaragoza has a second. Board Member Edmonds? Yes. Board Member Huber? Board Member Huber? Yes. Board Member LaVere? Yes. Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Rollins? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right. Moving now on to item number 12. Approval of an implementation services agreement to fund up to $1,835 annually for hosting and maintenance of the 
electricdrive805.com website with the Community Environmental Council through no later than December 31st, 2026, and authorization of the Air Pollution Control Officer to sign the agreement and make any necessary minor administrative changes to the agreement. Dr. Tsopoulos. Um, uh, so the Plug in Central Coast uh, Coalition was formed a few years back, and uh, our partners in the coalition, in addition to us, is um, um, uh, Santa Barbara uh, County APCD, San Luis Obispo APCD, uh, the um, California Environmental Council, uh, BC Rea, um, just to name a few. And the purpose of the coalition is to promote the use of electric vehicles, uh, promote the electric vehicle infrastructure, and provide outreach efforts. Um, uh, we have a website that has been um, um, uh, that has been administered by the um, by the Community Environmental Council, and the website address is, in case you are interested, the electricdrive805.com. Uh, so the action before you is to authorize me to enter into this contractual agreement and provide our share of maintenance cost estimated at $1,835 annually. All right, are there any questions from the board? This sounds like a uh, not a huge expenditure to get the information out there. So. Uh, well done, Lockie, and uh, well done working with our partners in the other counties on this. Obviously, as we move forward with the electrification of, of vehicles, it's important that you can travel up and down the central coast and not run out of juice. So these things are, you know, the, the infrastructure and the distance issue are still, what I'm being told, the number one concerns that new electric vehicle owners have. So this is all building the infrastructure and building the system so that we can convert over comfortably and get people changed over. So with that being said, do I have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Second. Rollins and Edmonds. Board member Edmonds? Yes. Board member Huber? Yes. Board member Lavere? Yes. Board member Long? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Rollins? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right. Now moving on to item number 13, approval of and authorization for the Air Pollution Control Officer to sign the Incentive Program Implementation Services Agreement for the South Central Coast California Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Project with the Center for Sustainable Energy for a funding commitment of $1.605 million and authorization for the con auditor controller to process the necessary budgetary transactions. And this would require six affirmative votes if we go with recommendation number two. So, doctor. Yes, uh, so this is uh, a related item to the previous item that we just voted. Um, and uh, Chair Blatt's um, actually, you know, made the comments uh, already, you know, that uh, I, was about going, I was about to make, uh, <laughs> namely the importance of uh, having electric vehicle charging infrastructure, uh, in, not just in our county, but also in the tri-county area. And I briefed you before a couple of uh, months ago uh, to let you know that we managed to get a grant from CEC, uh, several million dollars to be invested in this tri-county area. And we are leveraging um, uh, that funding with uh, our BNB monies, approximately one and a half million dollars. So we are proposing to invest $500,000 approximately uh, for the next uh, three years. So all in all, uh, when this is all done, um, we'll have invested in uh, just in our area of $5.8 million, primarily for uh, level two and uh, uh, fast charging stations. And there'll be special provisions to also promote the installation of those 
in our low-income and disadvantaged communities. So the proposal before you is to authorize me to enter into uh, an agreement with the uh, uh, Center for Sustainable Energy, who is going to be uh, doing the heavy lifting for in the tri-county area in the amount of one million six hundred and five thousand dollars. All right. Uh, there. First of all, are there any questions from any of the board members? Uh, just to clarify, Dr. Sopolis, on this, are we? It looks to me like we're approving both. It looks like we need to approve both one and two. Is that correct? Versus just we're not choosing between the two. And I'm not sure if we can do it in one vote since it requires six. But um, we are doing both one and two. Okay. Then uh, to make it clear, I will go ahead and uh, make the motion to approve recommended actions one and two. And if we can't do them together, I'm sure somebody will speak up and let me know. Um, is there a second for that? Second. Huber second. All right, Supervisor Huber has seconded that. Oh, Mia, you're muted now. Board Member Edmonds? Yes. Board Member Huber? Yes. Board Member LaVere? Yes. Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Rollins? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Board Member Blatz? Yes. All right. Now, moving on to item number 14, which is a public hearing regarding adoption of proposed amendments to Rule 71, crude oil and reactive organic compound liquids. Find that the proposed amendments are exempt from the CEQA, uh, CEQA requirements. Approval of and adoption of the statutory rulemaking findings for proposed amendments to Rule 71, crude oil and reactive organic compound liquids. Approval of and adoption of the proposed amendments to Rule 71, crude oil and reactive or organic compound liquids. And direct the Air Pollution Control Officer to file the CEQA notice of exemption pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 15062. Doctor. A couple of words. Um, so the next two items that you're going to be considering, they are both rule amendments, extremely important commitments uh, for our agency. You may recall under AB 617, the Community Air Protection Program, uh, we are obligated to uh, update some of our rules to the best available retrofit control technology standards. We committed as an agency to um, uh, update six of our rules, and we've already adopted, amended two of them. Uh, so these two basically rules that are before you this uh, today uh, are, is the second installment, and there'll be two more coming in uh, perhaps next year. Uh, and, uh, uh, and the sole purpose of this is to improve the control requirements so that the emission reduction benefits uh, do get experienced by our disadvantaged communities, low income uh, and disadvantaged communities. Uh, so, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Gassani, who's going to be doing the on. Hi. For the record, uh, Chair Blatt, members of the board, good afternoon. My name is Ali Gassani, um, Planning, Engineering, and the Rural Development Incentive Program Manager. I don't want to repeat what Dr. Lucky actually explained regarding the requirement of like, the purpose of this, but mainly we are doing this as part of the California Health and Safety Code. As every, the board members know, uh, Ventura County is designated as a non-attainment area for the eight-hour ozone standard based on the 2008 and 2015 eight, uh, standards. And to do that, to make that, to ensure that we're going to be in attainment, we can enforce all of the implement all feasible measures that to ensure that we're going to make the attainment, but by certain date. Also, this rule, the for, as a background rule 71 was adopted in June 20th, 1978, and it was 
amended seven times, and the most recent one was in 1994. See, this is a very old rule. I just want to tell you, next slide, please. There, I'm going to go through the amendments, the changes. The main changes that you may notice is we are reducing the leak rate from 10,000 ppm to 1,000 ppm. That's the main purpose of these change amendments. But there are other changes that we made. This is the definition rule that applies to the, all of the 71 rules. But this, uh, their facilities right now, they have to comply with the 1,000 ppm rule as opposed to 10,000. But the compliance year for this, this is going to be January 2022. We provided some lead time for the facilities to get used to, to do more monitoring, to come up with certain procedures to maintain that they are, they are not gonna go above this low rate that we set up for them or establish. The workshop is ruled this amendment in February 18, 2021. We did not receive any comments either from CARD or EPA. We received comments from industries that we, it, was, it has been addressed. And also we had the advisory, we held the advisory committee on March 25th and the advisory recommended adoption 13 to 1. That's my presentation. I'm ready for any questions. Are there any questions from any of the board members? Um, I should ask too, since this is a public hearing, do we have any public comments? We do not have any public comment. Okay, then we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. Um, I have one question, Ali. How many, do we have any idea how many, um, you know, how many different leak, leak, you know, gas leak, minor, whatever situations there may be, would suddenly be, uh, you know, would be, you know, are between the 10,000 and 1,000 threshold? Yes, there are actually how many of them. Usually nobody wants to have any leaks, but we haven't, for example, if you're talking about how many, for example, not sub violation they have issued for these facilities with the leak of more than 10,000, not real. We haven't done any like everybody has been in compliance because nobody wants to release the gases mostly they're going to go to the pipeline or is being flared so there is there is no need to have those things but there is a possibility that there are equipment leaks like pressure especially tanks pressure relief valves they may leak but those are being fixed right away so there is a requirement of certain days if the facility sees any leaks they have so many days to fix those but if the inspectors are there and there is any leak, they find out any leak, they, they're going to issue a note sub Thank you, Ali. No problem. Are there any other questions from the board? Not hearing any, then I will entertain a motion to approve. And I'm not going to repeat all of that again. Thank you, Lockie, for almost making my tongue fall apart trying to say that one. I can't wait for the next one. But uh, do I have a motion from someone to approve? So moved. Second, sir. Huber and Saragossa, I believe. The Huber or Ramirez? It was me. I think it was Sorry, me. Ramirez. That's My it. apologies. My apologies, Huber. Yeah. Thank you, Mia, for working through these technical difficulties. Thank you. Thank you. Board Member Edmonds? Yes. Board Member Huber? Yes. Board Member Laver? Yes. Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Rollins? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right. Moving on to item number 15, public hearing regarding adoption of proposed amendments to Rule 71.3, transfer of reactive organic compound liquids. Find that the proposed amendments are exempt from CEQA approval of and adoption of the statutory rulemaking findings for proposed amendments to rule 71.3 transfer of reactive compound organic compound liquids approval of and adoption of the proposed amendments to rule 71.3 transfer of reactive organic compound liquids and direct the air pollution control officer to find file excuse me the CEQA notice of exemption pursuant to CEQA guidelines section 150 point or excuse me 15062 all right Doctor, please, again, or Ollie, whoever's up this time. Ollie's going to be, okay. As 
Dr. Lucky, again, as Dr. Lucky explained, can, may I have extended, actually slide number two? Uh, explained as part of uh, 8617, your board adopted on December 11, 2018, the expedited schedule for the implementation of this available electrophy control technology. And this is just because we are designated as the non attainment area and to comply with the, the, the 2008 and 2015 eight hour ozone standards. As part of this, this rule was identified among those rules that we have actually the, uh, to include as work rules. And also California Health and Safety Code 40919 required give us the authority to implement all feasible measures to ensure attendance. Next slide, please. And just to provide you with a little background, this rule was adopted in June 20, originally in June 20, 1978. And it was, there were several amendments, and but recent amendment was in 1990. This is among one of those old rules that we it hasn't been touched before. Then the next slide, please. I'm just going to go through the proposed amendments. We, we propose the main one is we want the vapor control system for this loading rack. We increased it from 90% control efficiency to 95% efficiency, but there are we separated by two categories. Like the small facilities, which is 4,000 to 20,000 gallons facilities throughput, they have to comply with like they have to increase the control vapor control system to 95% efficiency. For the large facility, we have a more stringent requirements. These are the facilities greater than 20,000 gallons throughput per day. And these facilities, they have to comply with 0 0.08 pounds of VOC per thousand gallons of the throughput. Then there are other requirements as well. Like for example, we, we, we included quarterly, quarterly monitoring requirements. But if the facility consistent for five consecutive quarter, they have shown no leaks, we, in, we gave them the ability is going from quarterly to annual monitoring requirements. Also, another requirement is we increase their record keeping from two years to five years. And this was based on uh, EPA recommended action that we had for prior rules, not this one. Next slide, please. We had a workshop, we held a workshop on February 18, 2021. No comment, we haven't received any comments from CARB, neither CARB or EPA. We, we received uh, industry comments from industries and we address all of those comments in our rule amendments. We held an advisory committee on March 25th, 2021 and advisory committee members recommended adoption of 32. I'm done with the presentation. I'm ready for any questions. Yeah, are there any questions from the board? All right, uh, Mia, do we have any public comment? No public comment for this item. Okay, then we will close the public hearing. And if there are no other questions or comments from the board, then I will entertain a motion to approve. So moved, Pollock. Pollock? Second. And Rollins. Pollock and Rollins. Board Member Edmonds? Board Member Edmonds? Yes. Board Member Huber? Yes. Board Member Levere? Yes. Board Member Long? Yes. Board Member Parks? Yes. Board Member Pollock? Yes. Board Member Ramirez? Yes. Board Member Rollins? Yes. Board Member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right, moving on to item number 16 under the, the correspondence agenda. Receive and file correspondence from Dr. Lockie Tisopoulos, Ventura County Air Pollution Control Officer, to Pete Buttigieg, Secretary of Transportation, United States Department of Transportation, regarding the infra grant for fiscal year 2021 and support of the Port of Wainimi's modernization project. Yes, Chair Bratz and um, uh, members of the board, from time to time, when our partners seek our assistance, uh, 
we offer those support letters uh, and uh, uh, it's the case with this particular one. We work very closely with the uh, Port of Miami. They are going through this modernization project uh, that uh, where they are trying to improve the um, the cargo moving efficiency and also has a, a solar uh, investment element uh, embedded to it. To make the long story short, um, it's um, they are seeking ten million dollars uh, from the feds uh, and they want to leverage this with uh, six and a half million dollars. Of their own money and the project is consistent with the bctc objectives as well as the, the skag objectives it's included in their rtp uh, program and it's also consistent with um, uh, our abcd objectives um, and it will be good not just for the environment but also it will be bringing in uh, some um, uh, high paying jobs uh, so i think it's a good project and we offer our letter of support all right, any questions from the board? All right, do I have a motion to approve? Move to approve this wonderful idea. Thank you. I second Those it. Now. All right, Ramirez, and I, I'm sorry, That's was that Edmund? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Board member Edmonds? Yes. Board member Huber? Yes. Board member Lavere? Yes. Board member Long? Yes. Board member Parks? Yes. Board member Pollock? Yes. Board member Ramirez? Yes. Board member Rollins? Yes. Board member Zaragoza? Yes. Chair Blatz? Yes. All right, that is everything on the agenda. Uh, Dr. Tosopoulos, do we have a standing committee meeting today? Not today. Not today? Okay. I wanted to double check. All right. Well, then we don't have anything else. So unless there are any other comments or anything else from any board members, and I'm not seeing anything, then I believe we can go ahead and adjourn the meeting. If, if I can, the Board of Supervisors will be going back into closed session after this. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Park. Right, Thank with you. that, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Take care, everyone. So long.